Simon? Of it's not a sport. Um, there was a bunch of news this week. Just really a shit ton of news. So much that I'm actually gonna save some for uh next show. And there's just topics that I want to cover uh, that I'm gonna just save for next show because there's just so much news that came out of this week. So uh, first off, before we get into the news, let's start with esports. All right. So in LCS, Team Liquid is in first. They're 14 wins, two losses. Cloud9 is second with 12 wins, four losses. TSM is third with 11 wins, five losses. FlyQuest is fourth. Golden Guardians is fifth. COG, Echo Fox, and Optic are all tied for six. Clutch Gaming is ninth, and 100 Thieves is last place and tenth. In Europe, G2 is first with 13 wins, five losses. Origins is second with 12 wins, six losses. Fnatic and Splice are tied for third with 11 wins, seven losses. Uh, Vitality's fifth, SK sixth, Skelok is seventh. Misfits is eighth, Excel is ninth, and Rogue is ten. In LCK, Griffin is first with 13 wins, two losses. SK Telecom is second with 12 wins, 14 losses. And Sandbox and Kingzone are tied for third with 11 wins, five losses. Damwon is fifth. Hanwha Life is sixth. Genji and Afrika Freaks are seventh. KT is ninth. And Jin Air is tenth. In China, Fun Plus Phoenix is first with 10 wins, two losses. Top Sport is second with 10 wins, three losses. That's sad uh royals never give up and invictus gaming are tied for third with nine wins three losses jd gaming's fifth edward team we and rallabilly are all tied for six sino dragons are ninth sunning is 10 snake is 11 victory is 12 rogue warriors is 13 lgd is 14 and oh my god and vice gaming are 15 uh, I know that I believe a lot of playoff games will be coming soon for League, so they'll be transitioning into that. In the Overwatch League, which as always uh, is happening while we record, uh, Atlanta and Philadelphia will play soon, but currently the standings are Vancouver is first, then New York Excelsior, then Philadelphia, then Toronto, then Atlanta, then San Francisco, then Seoul, then Boston, and then the state, the playoff cutoff point right there, and that's followed by Dallas, Los Angeles Gladiators, Gangzu Chargers, Houston, Hangzhou Spark, Shanghai Dragons, London Spitfire, Chengdu Hunters, Paris, Washington, Florida, Los Angeles Valiants. In terms of game releases, uh. The big game that was released today was, of course, Sekiro Shadows Died Twice. Um, I will have my review on that soon. I want to go through all the small news first, and then we'll get to all the big announcements. Uh, some of the cool stuff is Final Fantasy VII's release for the Switch and Xbox. Uh, Unravel 2 came out today as well. We'll be getting Assassin's Creed 3 remastered. That's interesting because everyone hates Assassin's Creed 3. And The Walking Dead final season will also come out, I believe, next Friday. Or next Tuesday, actually. Yes, next Tuesday, the next Walking Dead comes out. Next Tuesday, I believe, are also the final update before maybe the final story update before the Shadowbringer expansion for Final Fantasy XIV. And as well as Guild Wars, I think we'll maybe also get their last uh, story update before we figure out what they want to do. So moving on, 
with the whole like a lot of the small news. Uh, if you read Tower of God, which I ha like highly recommend you do, Tower of God season three started back up after going on like a couple week hiatus. Toy Story four trailer came out. Uh, I'm sure all you've seen it. It's interesting. I thought Toy Story three was a great ending, but the trailer is. I just love Toy Story. It's something very dear to my heart. That comes out June 21st, so good movie to kick off your summer. Uh, Apple has finally updated the iMac with a better CPU and GPU options. It's about time they stop being cheap. Bethesda's press conference for E3 will be held on June 9th. The Division 2 physical copies don't seem to be selling well in UK according to the data that they publish. However, Anthem seemed to be selling okay as well, and I've heard great reviews on The Division 2 so far that it's been a pretty solid game. PAX East will be this weekend, so there's a couple things to look forward to for PAX East, at least for me. Um, the first one being Borderlands 3 is rumored to be announced. They've been teasing it on social media and Twitter. And I love this game, and I'm definitely hoping that we get a trailer for it or something. Or at least in a release date. Because that's going to be so hype. That's what I'm looking forward to the most out of PAX East. Other things will be uh, Final Fantasy news for the new expansion uh, for Final Fantasy XIV. There's rumored to be actually a lot of Final Fantasy news from Square Enix. Uh, Gearbox is also teasing a Duke Nukem sort of reveal which will be interesting because I don't know if Duke Nukem can recover after the last game that they had which was a monstrosity Castle Crashers so other than uh, PAX East that's all we kind of know so far because it happens this, over this weekend but PAX uh, Castle Crashers for instance over what we've gotten over uh, the games developers conference what we would get to Castle Crashers will be coming up Switch and PS4. Overwatch's new hero is now playable. Cuphead is being ported to the Switch. And probably the biggest low-key news, Disney and Fox's deal went through. So now uh, Disney owns Fox, I believe. And now for your superhero genre, what does that mean? It means that they've obtained X-Men. And... Deadpool as well. Bas making Disney basically a scary company. So, Apex. I forgot to, to pull this up. Uh, I guess I don't have to. Apex's uh, new character came out as well. It's its first battle pass. And it's been out for maybe like a week or now. It came out maybe last Tuesday. So if you ever want to go check that out. Uh, the new character is kind of cool. Like, he uses like drugs and he gets to move like super fast. So if you want to go check that out, that's now available on Apex Legends. They had on Reddit. They had I'm just, again. There's just so much news, so I'm just going through the list just to see what you know what to talk about. But on Reddit this week, they had an AMA for Halo. Uh, Master Chief Edition's coming for PC. There's no release date. There's no pricing yet. The PC specs will be shared uh, soon. For PC specific features, local split screen is tricky. Support will be investigated. PC says Xbox crossplay not available at launch. The team is actively investigating this. Goal is to support an uncapped FPS on all titles on PC. Goal is to support a 144Hz plus for all uh, Master Chief Collection games on PC. Forge and Theater for Reach won't be ready at launch on PC. Will be tackled a little later on the roadmap. FOV sliders will be supported on PC. Limits may vary by title. No official mod support at launch, but 3.343 are working closely with members of the sounding community, or, or members of the modding community. PC will have anti-cheat. 
Centered crosshairs, resolution, blah blah. Halo Reach. Halo Reach will have exclusive mix of match armor customizations. Reach Firefight is coming to Master Chief Collection. Halo Reach unlocks and progression from Xbox 360 will not carry over. Of course, they want to why with a playlist and settings not unlocked down yet. Looking for community feedback. No community hosted dedicated servers. Halo 3 customization not being redone for now. Options later done for a line being investigated. Master Chief Collection progression, stats, achievements, forge map, game variants from Xbox accounts will carry over between consoles and PC versions. Saved will not. So that's kind of cool. Just to see, like, you know. What's coming, uh, and what's their goals? What do they want to do? What do they want to accomplish with the Master Chief Collection? I'm definitely looking forward to it. It seems that they are working hard on it. And I'm sure they definitely have plans, and it probably won't be easy. But as long as they do it right, and they're not lazy with it, I'm cool with it. So, other news, Game Developers Conference just ended today. Uh, going on this week, the Game Developers Conference, if you didn't know, is kind of where all the... It's like an exclusive E3 show where like game developers go, and it's more about the developing side of games rather, other than the playing side of games. It's super expensive. It's in San Diego, and there's not a whole lot of newsworthy things that happen there, of course, because it's more like, you know... Uh, mingling with people so to speak i've never been but i definitely want to go and of course there are some small announcements that of course probably like the castle crashers and all that have come out of this conference but the biggest news is that god of war they chose god of war as game of the year there for, uh again i've spoken time and time again about this about god of war and about how if you haven't played it Definitely go pick it up and definitely go play it. It's such an emotional game. I haven't had like it's been so long since you have those type of games that are just emotionally with you and just stay with you. Uh, other news that also comes to mind that's actually kind of worth new, uh, newsworthy just because I care uh, and I, it's not on the list, but it's somewhat newsworthy. Uh, Persona 5R, which is kind of like built upon Persona 5, we actually don't know what it is. It's supposedly gonna get uh, news very excuse me, news very soon, uh, probably at PAX East. So that's, you know, good to see. But back to God of War, if you haven't played it, go play it. It's a fantastic game. Uh, they also have other awards down here. Best Audio, Celeste which is on my list. Best debut, Mountains. Best design, Into the Breach. Best mobile, Florence. Uh, Invention Award was Nintendo Labo, which is also have some new stuff going on. I don't know. Best narrative, Return to the Obra Jinn. Best technology, Red Dead Redemption 2. Best visual art, Gris. Best VR game, Save Beat Saber. Audience Award, Beat Saber, Game of the Year, God of War, Pioneer Game, Rico Kodima, Lifetime Achievement Award, Amy Henny. I don't know who that is. I should definitely look up who that is. So, moving on, let's talk about Google. Probably, this is probably the biggest kind of most surprising news that will be most game changing in a way depending on what happens and where it goes. This weekend, Google announced that they are stepping in to the gaming world. Well, yes, they're stepping into the gaming world with their new kind of streaming device, Stadia, or streaming program Stadia. So Little background, if you haven't known, uh, for the past like year or so, Google's been investing in trying to break into the gaming market. They started with 
the huge kind of streaming service that happened at like the end of last year was streaming Assassin's Creed Odyssey through Google Chrome and that was the big test. So this, at this announcement, they announced Stadia, which is their streaming service uh, for video games. So basically you'll be able to stream any video game at 60 FPS, uh, 1080p, through your Chromecast, through Chrome, through your phone, et cetera, et cetera. Anything Google related, essentially, you'll be able to stream through it. So, from there also they announced that they're working with a couple uh, developers that they have developer tools, you know, that you can use and you can sign up for. Uh, the lady that's handling it previously worked at Ubisoft, which makes sense because I feel like Ubisoft is maybe, and maybe Bethesda is the only company that's kind of opt into this from what they've shown us, from they've only shown us Doom and Assassin's Creed Odyssey streaming. They've said that they've had like their own private data centers or something like that in order to stop lag and latency because that's of course the biggest issue here but we'll cover that a little bit later uh they've also developed their own controller which is cool that you can play with their streaming service so let's get into the positive before i go into the negative and my thoughts on it and my thoughts only the positive of it is that if this works, it will change everything. So since it'll be a, it'll be pretty good, but they're not the first or trying to trying to do this. Uh, Xbox, I think, has been trying to do this. Where right now we're in like the same phase that we were with uh, VR, where it's like kind of the experimental phase, so to speak. So to see where it goes is interesting, but. Basically, Google's now challenging PlayStation and Xbox. So, if I was able to stream through my phone, it, 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 it would just it would just change a lot of things. It will make it kind of how like the Switch came in and it changed technology gaming, where now you can game mobily with your friends a lot easier. Cause the Switch, because the Switch is a genius piece of technology. So if Google is able to do that and is able to succeed where I can sweep, like play a game on my phone or consistently like that or when I was on the train or whatever, that will be fantastic. However, here's the downside to it. They're not the first to try this. Years ago, when I was a wee little lad, me and TJ used, didn't have good machines we're playing i was playing on this shitty ass toshiba laptop is the worst thing i've ever played with i never want to see it again i've actually yeah it's it was awful and he was playing on basically the same thing and we didn't even have good internet back then so what did we play these games on? We played Batman, we played Just Cause 2, we played Splinter Cell Conviction. If you're, there's old, old YouTube videos of us finding it, maybe I'll share it. They're really embarrassing. But how were we able to do that? Through OnLive. OnLive was a program where you logged on, you bought the games, and they streamed the games to your machine, and you played them. And from memory, a majority of the time, it worked. However, if your internet was complete shit, if the online servers were lagging, if, you know, you were lagging, the game would just completely break. It would be lagging. It, it, would, it would be terrible. It would be in, like, an unplayable state. So streaming video games is a lot different from, like, streaming movies. Because if you stream a movie, you just click the movie, and it goes. Right? But streaming video games, you're hitting buttons, you know? You, you're, it, the, it has to react to what you're doing. So if your internet's not good and it's just latency issues, that's really it. So on live, right, sadly, a couple years ago, shut down. And they have been dead ever since because 
one US internet and infrastructure is just not good enough. And with so many people in the house also streaming so many different things, it's just not good enough to withstand itself. So if Google can overcome that, and again, they've said that they have like their own internet data centers, which is kind of scary because then they're basically have their own internet or whatever. Uh, if they can overcome the latency issues, it will be really good. Also, so that's, so that's their biggest problem. Their second biggest problem is who's on board with it. Like VR, some companies, you know, have ported, you know, are really just experimenting with VR, but no big AAA company has decided, okay, uh, I'm the leader of Bethesda, and I'm going to double down on making a, well, I guess Bethesda has, so they're not really the best example. But like Activision, like would Bungie make entirely new ip only for only to be playable in vr or something like that or any company make a new ip like a triple a ip to be playable in, in vr so it's not so a lot of companies are like what i'm saying is like a lot of companies uh have experimented with vr like bethesda making like fallout vr etc cetera, etc cetera. and they haven't really doubled down on it so if Google can get people to really double down on selling their games through their streaming platform and making them stream viable or whatever, like they did with Ubisoft somehow, if they can do that and the publishers are willing to do it and then the uh, consumers are also willing to play it because the internet isn't fucking terrible, then it will be a great success. And I would love to see... Google, you know, accomplish this and we pretty, pretty damn game changing uh, from the lease. It will just, I don't know, bring back on live. It will bring it also a new audience for maybe people don't have those machines to run those, you know, fantastic games, but they have great internet. We'll see how it goes. It's rumored to launch, or no, it is going to launch sometime later on this year. So it's pure speculation now. We'll see what happens. Yeah, it's the best of them. I don't know, it's the best of it. So like, all I can really say out of all this is just take it with a grain of salt because Google is known for it. They have a lot of programs or programs that are projects that they've done and then they just dice, they just cut them because they just weren't working. Uh, Google has money to throw around and play with this, so we'll see where it goes from there. Now, let's move on to probably the biggest uh, game right out right now. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Usually I don't do game reviews when they come out, like the last couple of weeks with like Devil May Cry. That's because I haven't played them. I'm actually thinking of just picking up Devil May Cry now as well. But my take on Sekiro Shadows Died Twice is that I like it a lot. Um, it's super fun. And it's, it's really interesting to see from software do this type of game where Dark Souls, for instance, has always been linear, where there's only, only one path to follow, and then you can go off the beaten path, but eventually you just have to still go down that same path. But this game is not, but like Dark Soul, you still have choices of like what to put your stats into, how are you going to build your character, what sword are you going to use, you know, et cetera, et cetera, you know. Uh, in this game, they really took that away from you and they made it super linear as in your character only has, you know, a sword, a grapple hook. Here's the tools you can use. It's up to you on how to use them. It's, and that's really, it's just an interesting process of, so taking away that freedom basically takes it from a different type of game where instead of being scared in that aspect of freedom and that's kind of your choice and like how to tackle things you have to tackle things more tactically so you can't just build to beat it or farm to beat it you actually have to think so with the grapple hook 
and the stealth mechanics, you have to, you can grapple up on the roof, you can observe, you can listen to people, you can gain information, and these all come to tactical choices in the gameplay where now it's less about how can I build uh, up my character to tackle that boss and that strategy, and now it's about how can I tackle this certain situation with the tools given to me. So with that in mind, it still feels like a from software game because it's has its easy points where like the trash mobs are super fucking easy. I didn't have problems with them. I was going through them like a breeze. I was like, oh, this game's pretty easy. But then you meet the mini bosses and the mini bosses are so difficult. They're relentless right now. And a lot of people, and I feel like a lot of people compared to like my Dark Souls 3 run were like, even though the mini bosses were hard, uh, because I had a sword and a shield and I could, you know, no weapon to invest into, uh, what stats to invest into. I can always go back and farm. The mini bosses weren't super hard to tackle on my own, but in this game, you don't have that. So that's what makes it difficult is that you have to rely on your skill with the combat system other than how you can build your character to tackle the scenario. So a lot of these mini bosses are just brutal and they're just stomping me and oh boy it's it's sad eventually i just kind of hit a gate where it's like three mini bosses and i just don't know where to go but then you have to but then that forces you it's like okay can i defeat this boss what do i need to defeat this boss how uh do i have to defeat this boss is there another route i can go which there is uh, and i think i just made it to actually the first big boss battle Also, I think probably the most challenging aspect of the game is that your character, the level up, like again, because you lose your stats and level up in that uh, way, is that you... I don't know, this is how, like, it's difficult because, like, you have to... Uh, you start weaker. Like a lot of the bosses, like the mini bosses, are way stronger than you are. And you can't build to beat them, is what I'm saying. So that's a big, huge part of the difficulty right now. It's like, I'm just not strong enough to really beat that boss. And it makes me think, well, am I supposed to be here or not? I think maybe, you know, it's a balance issues. You know, maybe in the past, they did nerf things in Dark Souls, of course. And I'm wondering, like, later on as they go on, so, uh, nerf things as well later on but it's a definitely difficult game if you're looking for a challenge if you're looking for something with super fun combat which we'll get into in a second it's you know stealth kind of ninja gaiden it's definitely a from software game it's definitely really cool to see them make this game and i'm definitely enjoying it the story wise is that you are a shinobi ninja basically, and you are trying to find your master or save him or whatever from whatever fate has befallen upon him, and you get your arm cut off, and then you get a prosthetic ninja arm. That's the story so far. Visually art design, it's fantastic. I love the aesthetics of the game. Uh, when you get to like the mini bosses and just how they feel, they look great. It's kind of sad that it loses the Dark Soul aspect of like dressing up your character and the gear and the loot that people get. But the enemies look fantastic and they creepy and scary. I don't think it has that sort of fear and dark aspect that Dark Souls has, but it still has that ominous like what the fuck you know sort of feeling from from from, from software games. <laughs> the combat is interesting uh i like it a lot i like it how it's based it's similar to batman's combat like i like to think where it's all about striking and countering striking and countering but then it's also from from software so it's also about looking at the enemy's animations and kind of learning their moves to see what you can block what you shouldn't block what you should dodge etc etc and it also becomes somewhat and then that becomes kind of the routine and then like also certain tools or certain web, web enemies are weak to certain tools so you can also use that 
I would recommend it. It I would recommend it as a guy. It's a game that you definitely have to have patience and time with. So if you have patience, you have time, you want to play the game. I recommend this is you play it. It's super fun. It's super challenging, and it still feels like a great from software game. That's all I'm really gonna say about it for now, just because that's my experience with it. I will probably say more about it next week on next show. Uh, the more I get into it, the farther I approach it and maybe beat it. Hopefully I beat it by next week. I'm not too sure. It may be one of those games that you just gotta stop playing for like a couple months, give a break, and then you know get back into it whenever you do. Now, that's gonna conclude our show. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. It was actually, it went by really fast for me just because there was so much news just to talk about. If you enjoyed the show, all the past shows will probably be uploaded within the week on our YouTube channel. You can see all previous shows in season one on our YouTube channel. You can follow us on social media, that being Instagram and Twitter. And uh, of course, Twitch, you go on a Twitch chain to see uh, live streams. I stream every Friday at around 7 to 7.30 is generally when the shows start. You can catch us live. You can always come on the show. You can ask me questions or et cetera, whatever you want. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you're enjoying your games. I hope you're balling in your games. Thank you for listening. <laughs>